From the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700. Hello everyone, from the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700 on DCTV 23. I'm Wes Talland. And I'm Lena Hardy. Thank you for joining us. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners has finalized and prioritized its project list that will be funded by the Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax that voters approved in 2016. You may remember that 51% of the monies goes to transportation, 32% goes to fire, EMS, and the public safety radio system, and 17% goes to parks and recreation. The list is too long to detail here, but it's available on the county website at CelebrateDouglasCounty.com under News on the home page. The additional penny will be added to the sales tax beginning in April and will last for six years. Douglas County's portion of the SPLOST is estimated to be about $106 million over that period of time. The cities of Austell, Douglasville, and Villarica will receive proportional shares for projects that they have determined. The planning for the first projects is underway. Bids for the reconstruction of the intersection at Stewart's Mill Road and Reynolds Road will be advertised in May, and the public safety radio system is being designed. Z Gallery will create 115 new jobs and invest $3.7 million in Douglas County over the next two years as it creates an East Coast distribution facility and customer service center in Lithia Springs. The facility will be in the Skyview Business Center in approximately 225,000 square feet of office and warehouse space. Z Gallery is a premier lifestyle brand in fashion home space and offers furniture, art, home decor, and entertaining tailored to individuals' personal style aesthetic. Z Gallery sells through a catalog, an online presence, and 68 stores nationwide. Stating that she is excited to be able to advocate for her neighbors and friends, Mrs. Tiffany Stewart Stanley began work February 28th as Douglas County Government's first External Affairs Director. The job description states that the External Affairs Director will manage relationships with all county external stakeholders to include state and federal elected officials and departments of the various governments. To that end, Ms. Stewart Stanley said she will begin her duties by meeting with the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, County Administrator, to learn their legislative priorities, needs, and wish list. She later wants to meet with County Department Directors for detailed needs to be able to advocate for grant and other program funds with State of Georgia departments, such as Natural Resources and Department of Transportation. She will be registered as a lobbyist and feels she can work with all political parties at the local, state, and national levels. The 2017 Georgia General Assembly is more than halfway through its session. So Mrs. Stewart Stanley's legislative efforts will be to lay the groundwork for the 2018 session. The U.S. Congress, however, meets all year long. So she will take items and issues on behalf of the Board of Commissioners to Congressman David Scott and Senators Johnny Isaacson and David Perdue. A native of Natchez, Mississippi, Mrs. Stewart Stanley earned a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Political Science from Alcorn State University and her Juris Doctor from the University of Mississippi School of Law. As part of the county's Enhanced Transparency Initiative, work sessions held by the Douglas County Board of Commissioners in their boardroom are now being videotaped with a recording placed on the county website and social media. The videotape is viewable from the county website at CelebrateDouglasCounty.com, usually on the same day the work session is held. There is a link on the website homepage labeled Commission Work Sessions, Meetings and Agendas that will lead to the posted recording. The videotaping system was designed by DCTV23 staff and installed by DCTV23 and building management staff. The system is operated by the DCTV23 staff. The legislative voting meeting of the Board of Commissioners are normally scheduled for the first and third Tuesdays of each month, and with work sessions are usually at 10 a.m. on the day before the legislative meeting. The schedule is sometimes changed due to holidays and other occurrences. The complete schedule for the 2017 work sessions and the legislative voting meetings is posted on the county website. 
in keeping with Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones's pledge to increase the technical capability of government, a new in focus Mondo pad has now been installed in the Board of Commissioners boardroom. The 85 inch touch screen incorporates the internet, whiteboard, document annotation, video conferencing, and other features to enable a fully interactive tool for commissioner work sessions, other meetings held in the boardroom. The Mondo pad can interact with tablets, laptop computers, and smartphones for presentations. It has three USB ports that can also be used to import presentation. It supports Microsoft Windows 10 and Microsoft Office software. The Mondo pad has been installed on the south wall of the boardroom so that it's also visible to one of the cameras used to videotape the commissioner's work sessions. The Georgia Department of Public Health is receiving complaints from residents about suspicious phone calls, many of which appear to come from public health phone number. It is a scam. These phone calls are not coming from the public health, and residents should be extremely cautious when participating in health-related telephone surveys. The health department will never ask for religious information or credit card information, and will never try to sell you goods or services. Residents who get a call of this nature are asked to report it to the Douglas County Sheriff's Department or 911. The Douglas County Public Health Center can help protect you from illness when you travel overseas. Spring break trips and summer vacations are now being planned. This is a new service that can help you have a safer and more enjoyable trip. We'll talk about that next on Newsmakers, so please stay with us. I'm Wes Talon. And I'm Lena Hardy, and this is 8700 on DCTV 23. Tribal Health Services at Cobb and Douglas Public Health was created to protect our citizens traveling to foreign countries from vaccine-preventable diseases and malaria. Not every country has the hygiene and health standards we have in the United States, so it pays to plan ahead. Joining me to talk about this new program is Gail Wade, a registered nurse with Cobb and Douglas Public Health. Thanks for coming in. I'm looking forward to it. Where is Travel Health Service located? We're on Selman Drive at the Douglas County Health Department next to the Public Library. Oh, okay, so you're part of Public Health Services there. It's yes, not like a separate are. building or mm -hmm. anything like that. Correct. What services do y'all offer? Well, we provide an interview that covers the country or countries that you're visiting. Um, and we discuss all the vaccines that are needed. And um, just for the simple service, um, it, they offer, also offer malaria consultation as a separate part if you need malaria to, in the country you're going to. Okay, so how do y'all keep up with what's going on <clears throat> in certain continents and certain <clears throat> countries and things like that? We have like a Travax report that is um, an accumulation of information from around the world that is produced and uh, we put in that country and um, are multiple countries and it produces what vaccines are required for each country and what may be required just for entry into the country and the recommendations. It has health risk besides vaccines that are needed, has consulate information in there. So if you need to go to the NBC or something, the information's in that report you take with you to the country. You're wow. Going to. I wish this had been available the last <laughs> time I traveled internationally. I was kind of lost on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, how, you know, what, is there a, like a common vaccine that you need regardless of where you're traveling? Right, there are, the top three are probably the tetanus vaccine. Okay. You need to be up to date. That's within um, five years of your last one. Okay. Um, after five years, you, if you get hurt, you need another one in that country. And you don't want to look for a vaccine in another country, so we get you to get it here. Then um, hepatitis A is the most recommended for every country almost um, because, um, you know, most kids have to have vaccine with that nowadays, but adults do not. And so hepatitis A is important. And then... Um, Hepatitis typhoid. Is, yeah, well, typhoid and mm. hepatitis are very communicable. Right. On that, and both of those, if I and I'm doing this as a layman here, both of those are very related to cleanliness, right. hygiene, public health, yes, things like that. Yes, they're transmitted fecal oral route, and so a restaurant you know, a, a small restaurant, they may not have the employees wash their hands. You need to see the signs in the U.S., but 
you won't see that in yeah. other countries, and so that's um, protection for you and um, to get those three basics done. Any country, those are the top three. I, you know, I hadn't thought about that when you said restaurants, but I've traveled Europe three times, and yeah, there were restaurants I was almost scared to eat. Yeah. The, the, the food because of everything else that was going around and looking like that, and it's right. not that, I, I guess we're a little spoiled. We are. That, the health you know, department keeps up on those things through different departments. Uh, yeah, and, and we got scores when you walk in, the right. 98 or the 73 or right. whatever. You know what we have, and you don't have that internationally. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and all that. so this is kind of a, you know, a nice revelation here on this. Uh, do I need to make an appointment to be able to come? Yes, you do, and it's preferably that you make it probably a month before you leave the country. Okay. So your vaccines have time to build immunity in your system. Um, but if they're last minute travelers, we do try to help people that have waited too late or Of course, <laughs> at the last minute. Um, well, you have to but, apply to get your uh, yes. passport and everything ahead of time. Right. So possibly they do, when you get your passport is when you need to think about that. Start thinking mm -hmm. about your shots right. and all. Now, internationally, I'm thinking across the waters. Mm -hmm. Canada, do we need to do this for, for Canada? Um, I tip, Bahamas. I, I you know, feel the, like at least Hepe and type, uh, tetanus should be uh, vaccine. Everybody's vaccinated. Nobody, with, no matter where you're going. No matter where you're going to. Typhoid's probably not an issue in Canada. Anywhere else, South America, African countries, I think it's best to be vaccinated for okay. typhoid. It's not something you enjoy having. How much does this cost? Um, the visit is uh, $50, and if you want a malaria consultation so that I prescribe malaria medication that you pick up in a pharmacy, it's $25 more, so $75 with that malaria consultation. Vaccines, um, typhoid is like $94 for a vaccine. Um, Do insurance cover some of this? It does not. It will cover tetanus, hep A, um, hep B. Uh, many of those, you know, mm -hmm. good ones that you should have are covered by insurance, but not like tetanus or yellow fever. Um, some of those. Okay. This is amazing. I am so glad that y'all are offering this this program now. This is, uh, and and here we are, in in March mm -hmm. when people are planning for right. spring break, are planning for summer vacations. Mm -hmm. So the health department is located where again? On Selman Drive, next to the Douglas County Health uh, Library. Okay, mm -hmm. Gail, thank you so much for the information. You're welcome, Appreciate Enjoyed the new service. Thank you. Lena and I will be back in a moment with more news, so please stay with us. I'm Wes Talon, and this is 8700 on DCTV 23. Welcome back. The Douglas County School System has been recommended for the National District Reaccreditation by an internationally recognized accrediting board that evaluates school systems in the United States and 70 other countries. The school system undergoes accreditation evaluation every five years. The overall score for the evaluation is 307, well above the average score of 278 for all school systems evaluated during the past year. A team of eight professionals visited the school system in late January to hear presentations from school system personnel on five evaluation standards. Purpose and direction, governance and leadership, teaching and assessing for learning, resources and support systems, and using results for continuous improvement. The evaluation team interviewed 271 stakeholders, including 102 students, and visited 103 classrooms. Accreditation is necessary for students of a school system to be able to attend college and receive scholarships and other financial aid. A record number of Douglas County schools have won statewide accountability system awards for highest performing or greatest gains. South Douglas Elementary won the award for highest performing in student achievement. And at Wynn, Chapel Hill, Dorset Shoals, Eastside, Holly Springs, and Winston Elementary Schools won greatest gains in student achievement. Highest performing schools such as South Douglas must have a three-year average college and career ready performance index achievement score in at least the 93rd percentile. 
They must also have a three-year rating above the 75th percentile in the state to ensure that lowest performing of the student population is not falling behind. Although most of us don't really understand the complex rating system, let it suffice to say that this achievement by seven elementary schools in Douglas County is remarkable. 29 Douglas County schools perform better than statistically expected on the College and Career Ready Performance Index. The Beating the Odds analyst predicts a range within a school score is expected to fall given the school size, transit population, and demographics. Douglas County beat the odds rate of, of 87.8% .8 is much greater than the neighboring counties. Paulding County scored 24%, Carroll County scored 69%, Cobb County scored 55 percent and Cherokee County scored 40 percent. Ten Douglas County schools have beat the odds every year for the last five years. In other words, we are exceeding the experts' expectations. All five high schools in Douglas County were named 2017 Advanced Placement STEM schools by the Georgia Department of Education. STEM is Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Alexander and Chapel Hill High Schools were named Advanced Placement Humanities Schools. Lithia Springs High School has earned state and national STEM certification, the only high school in Georgia to do this. Factory Shoals Elementary and Lithia Springs Elementary were named High Progress Reward Schools by the Georgia Department of Education. A high progress school is among the 10% of the state's Title I schools making the most progress in improving the performance of all schools over three years of state assessments. Douglas County, Lithia Springs, Alexander, and Chapel Hill High Schools have been approved to issue the International Skills Diploma Seal. The seal is awarded to students who complete an international education curriculum with courses in language and international focus, including a capstone presentation on the gained knowledge in extracurricular activities and community service with a global focus. Over 100 students are striving to earn the Diploma Seal in 2017. So our schools are on the move, and it's partially due to having great teachers and staff. For example, Chapel Hill High School's principal, Dr. Sean Kelly, has been named a finalist for the Principal of the Year in the state of Georgia. Dr. Kelly is one of five finalists. His candidacy will go through an extensive review of the performance of Chapel Hill High School and an interview. Chapel Hill High School has won numerous recognitions and honors during his tenure as principal, including, including being named an Advanced Placement Access School, Advanced Placement Access and Support School, STEM Achievement School, and for its Advanced Placement Capstone Program. The Washington Post listed Chapel Hill High School as one of America's best high schools that challenge their students to excellence. Another example, Alexander High School's Brian Robertson was named Georgia Cross Country Coach of the Year. He received this honor by the U.S. in Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association. His team brought home the Cross Country State title in 2016. In addition to coaching, Robinson teaches economics to seniors and the world history to sophomores. Congratulations to Dr. Kelly, Coach Robinson, and all of the principals, teachers, and administrative staff of the Douglas County School System for these incredible achievements. Immunizations drastically decrease the number of vaccine preventable diseases. The vaccines you need change depending on your age. I see a needle in my future. Time for another shot, see if I flinch. Next up on Issues and Answers, I'm Wes Talon. And I'm Lena Hardy, and this is 8700 on DCTV 23. Following a regular schedule of vaccinations from infancy through adulthood offers the best line of defense against a variety of illnesses and diseases. If you have watched this program over the past few years, you should know that I'm a big advocate of preventive medicine, that I follow the advice of my good friend, Carla Ayers, when, she, when it comes to vaccination. Carla is the registered nurse in charge of the Douglas County Health Department. She joins me now with her little box of refrigerated goodies. Carla, thanks for coming in. You're welcome, Wes. Today, I'm getting a pneumonia shot. Yes. Why am I supposed to be getting a uh, an, 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 pneumonia shot? <laughs> I got a flu shot last fall. 
You did get a flu shot last fall. Um, flu shots are recommended yearly because the flu virus uh, mutates and changes and the patterns changes on which flu might be circulating in a specific area. Okay, but I took the flu shot like last fall and right. it should still be in effect now, right? Correct, correct. Okay. It's good for six to eight months through the flu season, which usually ends about March uh, or May. Sometimes it hangs on. Um, Pneumonia is uh, caused by a total different set of uh, bacteria and the pneumonia vaccine that you're getting today is the pneumonia 23, uh, commonly known, and it is the one that's given to people who are 65 and over. I just told stories on you, so sorry. I did say she was my friend that came <laughs> in and now we have Carla from the health department who is not my friend anymore. Continue. <laughs> so, um, so anyone 65 and over or certain medical um, problems need to get this. If you don't have a spleen because you had to have surgery mm -hmm. uh, to remove that spleen. If you're diabetic, you need to get the pneumonia vaccine. Um, so there are other medical conditions other than age uh, uh, to get the pneumonia vaccine. Now, there are two pneumonia vaccines out there. There's one that a lot of people will see on the TV, one and done, yeah. you know, where they eat the fruit or do the sit up or whatever. And that's called Prevnar, or we call it pneumonia 13. Um, and that's also given to children, but it is recommended for 65 and over because this only protects against so many. And then the other one protects against so many forms of the pneumonia. Okay, um, so should, uh, people 65 and older get both shots? They should, but they need to be separated by at least six months to a year. Okay, so the pneumonia vaccine that I'm getting today, um, what's it gonna do? Well, it should protect you against the types of pneumonia that are included in the vaccine. Okay. Vaccines are not 100%, but if you do get pneumonia, it should lessen the severity of the disease. Okay, it's kind of like the shingles vaccine that I got a few years ago. Correct. I may still get shingles again, I've already had it once, but get the shingles vaccine after um, the 60. symptoms have gone, gone away. Correct. And, and things like that, and the, then that will lessen the severity of it if it comes back Correct. again. Correct. Okay. Is pneumonia a problem among senior citizens? It can be because if uh, think about when you're older or even when you're younger, you your immune system is not as good as when you're. Uh, in your and, prime years. Exactly. And things and like that. Okay. Correct. So as you get older, your immune system goes down. So that's why the pneumonia can help with that. And in certain disease processes, uh, even uh, if you are doing everything that your uh, clinician provide, tells you to do for your disease process, this again would help because disease processes also lower the immune system. Okay. Now there are certain shots, and we've talked about this many times before, certain vaccinations that you should get at different stages of your life. That's what we were just talking about. Correct. Now, flu shot every year. Uh, in the last couple of years, you gave me and we educated our viewers about Tdap. Correct. Which, that was brand new to me that I didn't even know about tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, and it's every 10 years on that. Correct, the Tdap, the diphtheria, tetanus, yeah. and pertussis is once a lifetime. Okay. The TD part of it is every 10 every years. Every 10 years. For pregnant women though, they're gonna get the Tdap every pregnancy. Okay. So if you have a young woman and it's pr to protect them against the P part or the pertussis, which, which is, is the whooping cough. cough. Correct. Yes. So for a regular, a normal adult or adult males specifically, they're just going to get one right okay. now in a lifetime of the T-DAP with okay, the P so on I'm it. Okay, so I'm covered. Correct. But you still need a TD, which is the tetanus diphtheria part every 10 years. So that's where you're, you're right on it. You're, you you're got right it. on it. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, chicken pox. That leads to the shingles. If you did not get the vaccine as a child, then you need it as an adult. If you had chicken pox as if a you child, had chicken pox as a, as and a you child. were 60 and over, the shingles vaccine is recommended. Yes. Yes. Um, 
a lot of insurances do pay for it. Some of them do not. Um, the state, as of right now, has a program to let us give that shingles vaccine to those adults 60 and over at a reduced rate. Okay. And let me tell you, it is a reduced rate. And okay. So if there are viewers thing. out there who don't have insurance or their insurance won't pay for the shingles, come visit us at the Public Health Department and we will help you out. I've had the shingles. We've talked about this on the air before. Get the shingles shot. It's the most pain I have ever been in in my life. Okay, Hep A and Hep B? Uh, depends. Um, if you're traveling, you might want Hep A. If uh, Hepatitis B, it depends on um, things. We go by something called HALO, which means um, your health factors, your age, your lifestyle, occupation, or other factors, HALO. Okay. And that'll determine whether or not you need Hepatitis A or Hepatitis B or um, the pneumonia. Um, whether you need haemophilus, which is usually something that kids get. So it just depends on what's going on. Hepatitis B is recommended for adults with diabetes. It was recommended several years ago um, to help protect your liver. So uh, we just go by those, that HALO, an acronym. Okay, and, and you can get all these everything. shots at the health department. You can. We take several forms, most forms of um, commercial insurance, uh, Medicaid, Medicare, the Part D Medicare Transact, if you have those that pay for prescriptions. And then, of course, we do have some state vaccines for adults that you can get at a super discounted rate okay. if you were eligible for those through that Okay, program. well, let's, let's get going here on getting my pneumonia shot 23. 23, it's called Pneumovax. Okay, and what should I expect? Um, you may have a little redness or swelling at the site where you get it. That's mm -hmm. always very normal. Um, maybe it may itch a little bit. I actually got mine a couple of weeks ago at my doctor's office. Oh, um, are you over 65? I am not over 65, uh, but I have a medical condition that, oh, okay. that makes me eligible that for that. that. Well, the reason uh, that I do this is that, honestly, like so many other people, I'm too busy to get sick. And, yeah. and I mm -hmm. believe in preventive uh, medications, yeah. and she's giving me the shot. It's done. People, if this prevents or helps prevent you getting sick, this is what you need to do. Got the Band-Aid, but it's not Tasmanian Devil. I know. I'm disappointed. Sorry. She usually brings me Tazzy, so we're going to do that. So we're good, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Carla, thanks for coming for in. You're a glutton for punishment, I am a glutton for punishment. <laughs> Lena and I will be back in a moment with the rest of the news, so please stay with me. I'm Wes Talon, and this is 8700 on DCTV 23. Welcome back. We have a couple of roadway construction updates for you. The Georgia Department of Transportation has awarded a contract to C.W. Matthews Contracting Company for the widening and reconstruction of Bankhead Highway between Bright Star Road and Gurley Road. The project includes four intersections with Bankhead Highway, Bright Star Road, Georgia Highway 5, the railroad crossover to West Strickland Street, and Gurley Road. Vehicles in this area make a lot of left turns, and this project seeks to make them safer. The construction is now starting and it has a completion date of December 31st. Just a few miles to the west on Bankhead Highway is a major roadway alignment and reconstruction project at its intersection with Post Road, Mason Creek Road and Connors Road. Detours are now in place as utilities are now being moved. Construction is underway. The detours will be in place through the end of the summer. Construction will continue for another year. Motorists will experience traffic delays, so please plan accordingly. When completed, the dangerous intersection will be gone. Traffic lights will be installed, new turn lanes will be constructed, and the speedy downhill roadway slope will be lessened. So please be patient. And that's the news for now from 8700. Thanks for joining us. I'm Wes Talon. I'm Lena Hardy. See you next time.